Welcome back to this uh, bathroom remodel series on our DIY Boomers channel. This video being the uh, second in the shower rebuild, uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the old supply lines and uh, install new and uh, discuss uh, a little bit about uh, what different products you can use uh, for your supply lines. So if you saw the uh, first bathroom remodel video in this series, uh, I mentioned the uh, reason for getting started on this remodel was uh, me breaking this uh, valve housing. Uh, it was leaking from the uh, shower head, so I tried to uh, get that uh, cartridge out, removing that ring. I applied too much pressure on the valve housing and broke it and had to uh, shut the water off downstairs and then uh, isolate it by cutting the pipes and putting the shark bites on to get the water back on. More about uh, shark bite fittings in a little bit. So initially, when we first started thinking about uh, doing the remodel, uh, I was thinking about using PEX uh, to rebuild the supply lines. But for the little amount that has to be done here, uh, it just makes more sense to uh, rebuild it with copper. So here's a uh, picture of uh, some PEX piping and connections. Uh, the piping is uh, color-coded, so you can use it for hot and cold, red, blue and a mixture from the valve, uh, you can use the white if you'd like. Um, the connections are made by using that ring you can see in the middle. It's a metal ring that slips over the PEX piping. And then uh, there's a couple different tools you can use to crimp it into place, securing the connection. Um, it, it makes more sense uh, using PEX for a long uh, distance on the job, uh, more than just a small job like this, a uh, uh, copper repair job. So here's another type of shark bite uh, connection. These are shutoff valves that I installed after breaking that uh, shower valve to be able to isolate uh, the line that comes upstairs to the bathroom. Um, like the PEX connections, they come in all, anything that uh, you can get in copper, you can get in PEX and you can get in, uh, in uh, shark bite and any combination transition from one to the other. So I really like shark bites. Uh, they're so easy to use. They just slip over the pipe and you're done. Um, I just have one reservation uh, and that being how they're going to hold up long term for not leaking. It may be unwarranted, but uh, uh, so far I haven't used them anywhere that I don't have uh, access to. So here are the uh, shark bite end caps that I used when I broke the water valve. Uh, just shut the water off. Uh, cut the pipe, pop these caps on, turn the water back on, uh, real handy to use. Um, I might mention also that uh, all the shark bite fittings are reusable, you can take them off. There's a tool that fits over the pipe and you can see the ring at the bottom, you just pu push that tool up into the uh, fitting and it pops right off. So the plan is to uh, save these two air hammers. Uh, I'm going to cut them off and just reuse them when I reassemble the new valve. And then uh, I'm going to replace that, uh, that pipe going up to the shower head because I want to raise it a little bit up to the top of that stringer there and get the uh, shower head up a little higher. If you're not familiar with what a uh, water hammer arrestor is, uh, they're uh, added to uh, plumbing near uh, uh, valves. Um, so when they're shut off quickly, uh, they're designed to absorb the shock in the system. Uh, so that you don't have that uh, pipe hammering that you get uh, sometimes here when you shut off a valve uh, suddenly. I've uh, heard and read where uh, when you're using PEX, since it's a uh, uh, plastic, um, that there's some expansion there and you don't need uh, the uh, water hammer arresters. But uh, check with your local code. Uh, you may need them anyway, and uh, I think it's a good idea to use them because uh, that added shock to the system I've read where it can uh, loosen some of the uh, PEX uh, uh, joints. If you're wondering what the uh, water hammer is, it's, uh, I didn't explain it uh, earlier, but it's just basically a piece of uh, piping with a cap on the end of it. So here's the majority of the uh, connections and the tools that I'm going to need uh, to do the rebuild. Uh, as far as the connections, I got a couple uh, T's, a couple splices and the brass threaded uh, shower, uh, uh, shower head uh, elbow. As far as the tools, uh, you'll need a pipe cutter. Uh, the bigger one, uh, I've had it for years. Uh, this smaller one is uh, handier. I've had, I bought it recently and uh, it gets into tight places. It's uh, a lot easier to use. Uh, you need a wire brush. This uh, particular brush 
does the outside and the inside on half inch and three quarter. You'll need some plumber's abrasive cloth and of course some uh, solder that is uh, lead free. Make sure you get lead free if it's going to be used uh, where there's human consumption. And of course you need some flux. Uh, that's most uh, important that you uh, get some good flux. Uh, cleans the pipe up and makes uh, sure you get a good connection. And of course your uh, torch. Um, this torch head, uh, pretty reasonable. It's an automatic igniter. I've had it for years and I uh, use these small bottles of uh, propane that I used to use on a, on a portable grill that I, that I had. Um, like I said, I use propane. There is another gas that you can use. Uh, it's called uh, MAP. MAP Pro now. It used to be MAPP was an acronym for, acronym for the uh, three gases that were uh, in, that, uh, in that product. Nowadays, it's, uh, they've uh, changed it a little bit. It's MAP Pro and it's just got two gases in it. Uh, propylene and propane, but it still burns a little bit hotter than uh, propane. So if you want to speed up uh, the soldering process a little bit, you could use that too. And lastly, um, just a five foot uh, piece of uh, copper piping uh, was all that I needed uh, to uh, do this remodel. So here's the old shower valve and shower uh, head riser um, that I'm going to be rebuilding. Uh, I had already cut it off from the supply line, so it was just a matter of unscrewing the brackets from the uh, rough end framing. And here I'm using my laser level to ensure vertical plumb. Uh, it's probably a little bit overkill. You could just use uh, measurements from your uh, side studs. Okay, I've shut the uh, water valves off down in the basement, uh, opened a couple faucets, one upstairs, one downstairs to drain the lines. And uh, I'm just going to cut these uh, supply lines down a little bit lower um, to make it a little more convenient uh, for putting the new uh, uh, assembly on with the uh, couplings. As mentioned uh, previously, uh, here's the little tool, the shark bite tool that you can remove uh, the fittings with. Just uh, snap it on the pipe, slide it up to the fitting, apply a little pressure, pop it off, ready to be reused. So this is the uh, Delta Ruffin valve that we're going to be using. Uh, as you can see it's got uh, threaded uh, connections and also copper fits inside. And you can also get these valves uh, with uh, PEX uh, connections uh, already on them. This particular rough-in valve that we ordered, uh, as you see, has no port on the bottom, which would go down to the tub filler. We ordered this specifically for shower installation only. Uh, if you happen to get one that does have a port on the bottom, you can always plug that up with a piece of pipe and an end cap. One of the things I really like about these uh, Delta rough-in valves is uh, you can use uh, different cartridges. There's three different cartridges you can install with this valve. And uh, depending on the trim, uh, the handle, uh, some of them give you option for volume, water volume, and temperature, two separate handles. And so that requires a different cartridge than you would with just a straight one handle uh, trim package. And you can always change this cartridge out later on if you decide to upgrade to a different trim package without having to tear into the wall and uh, change out your, your rough-in valve. The rough-in valve does not come with a cartridge. Uh, that comes with the, uh, the, rough, or the uh, trim package that you end up selecting. Uh, in order to start uh, assembling, to start soldering, you need to remove all the uh, pieces that uh, uh, would be subject to melting. This is the plaster guard, comes off. This is what ends up being flush with your finished wall. And uh, your test cap, which uh, lets you test uh, after your soldering to make sure there are no leaks. So uh, you can just remove the plaster guard. And remove the bonnet. which lets you take the test cap off, which has an O-ring on the inside. And now you can see there's no plastic parts that are going to be damaged when you start your soldering. This uh, handy plug is what I'm going to use once you get everything soldered up uh, to test uh, your system for leaks. 
this is the uh, uh, the shower head elbow and this will plug that which enables you to uh, apply the uh, water pressure once everything's sealed up with the test cap and uh, test everything for leaks. A uh, very critical part in your copper soldering is make sure that your copper pipe is clean. Take your plumber's abrasive cloth, get it sanded off. Any uh, dirt left on that surface uh, could uh, leave voids in your solder and eventually uh, leading to a leak. And don't forget to clean the inside of all your brass connections. So when applying the flux, you want to get a solid layer both inside the connector and on the outside of the pipe. You don't want to get too much and get the connection too hot. That will uh, could create a void in the uh, solder and end up uh, leaking on you. You want to get a solid uh, layer both inside the uh, connector and around the outside of the pipe. That uh, flux is actually what aids in pulling the uh, solder inside the connection. Okay, after you get uh, everything uh, cleaned and fluxed, um, as far as uh, getting the correct amount of solder in your joint, uh, I like to bend the end a little over a half an inch. General rule of thumb is for a half inch pipe, you're going to use about a half an inch worth of solder. So you don't want to get too much, you don't want to get too little. So once you get close to that point, you know you've got the, uh, the solder uh, amount uh, correct. So applying the heat is uh, critical. Uh, you don't want to get it too hot. You'll burn the uh, flux off and create voids in the joint. You don't want to uh, apply too little heat. You won't get it hot enough to uh, suck the uh, solder into the joint. So what I like to do is apply heat for a few seconds around the whole area of the joint. And then when I get ready to test the solder, I'll put the heat on one side and direct it on the connection more than the pipe after the pipe is all heated up. And then on the opposite side, start tapping and applying the solder to see if it's melted in. If it's hot enough on the back side, uh, start sucking it in. You know you've got enough heat all the way around. So in the end, this is what you're after, a nice solid bead all the way around the joint. So here's the uh, completed valve assembly, all soldered in place. Uh, got the test cap back on, the valve assembly, and the test plug at the shower head. Turn the water back on and we had no leaks. Uh, when we get to the uh, tiling stage, we'll get that plaster guard back on and show you the uh, trim package at that point. Uh, so don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and uh, the next video we'll be working on the uh, solid surface drain moving the drain from uh, the old location uh, to uh, to the new location in the front see you next time